Kevin Bowen, Colts.com featured writer, joining us on the Menards Studio Hotline. Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing great, guys. I'm definitely excited to finally talk some sort of regular season football, and it's crazy to think that all the off-season hype will finally be quieted at least for a little bit on Sunday afternoon in Buffalo. It is uh, definitely nice to be talking about games that are going to mean something instead of some, some pointless, uh, not necessarily, you know, the preseason gets a bad rap because the scores really don't matter, but especially that last game of the season where we talked about it last week when, when you joined us. You know, that's a big time for some of these guys that are on that roster bubble to make a case for themselves as to why they should make that 53-man roster. So it's not meaningless. It may not be the most entertaining thing in the world, but it's not necessarily meaningless. Uh, and it gives the guys a chance to go out there and, and bang heads with people other than uh, members of their own team. Um, before we get real in-depth of 53-man roster kind of stuff, uh, do you get an opportunity to make these road trips like to Buffalo, or do you got to sit back in Indianapolis at the, the complex there and watch from afar? I do, yeah. We'll be leaving for Buffalo on Saturday afternoon. So, I mean, really excited about that, to be honest with you. Just all the anticipation that they've had this off season. I think when you look at the Colts in Buffalo, I don't think there's two teams that maybe had more off season hype than bringing Rex Ryan in. That fan base seems really fired up for this season. I think it's a really talented football team. So, I'm eager to see uh, what that atmosphere is going to be like Sunday afternoon at Ralph, R- Ralph Wilson Stadium. Yeah, it should be a good one. And of course, when you're there, you got to get you got to get wings, right? Because that's like the home of the wild wing, right? Oh, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I'm not I'm not going there just just for all football. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's take a look at some of the moves and some of the guys that were were cut, waived, and all that other stuff as they whittled it down to the 53 man roster uh, this past Saturday. They pick up a couple of guys off waiver wires: T. Y. McGill, uh, Robert Myers. Now to make room for them. Uh, Boom Heron gets waived. Uh, Andrew his shoulder there in the final preseason game. Uh, what can you tell us about T.Y. McGill and, and Robert Myers? Where did they come from? Uh, kind of give us the scoop on these two guys. Well, let's start with uh, T.Y. McGill. I think when the Colts cut down to 53, and I think the first thing that kind of jumped out at people was only five defensive linemen on that 53-man roster. So you knew once a waiver claim came on Saturday and Sunday that the Colts were going to make a claim for defensive linemen. And that's T.Y. McGill. He's an undrafted kid out of North Carolina State. He was not initially signed in that normal wave of undrafted free agents. You usually see teams, you know, sign right around a dozen undrafted kids once the draft's over. He wasn't signed. He went to the Seattle Seahawks for a rookie minicamp tryout, impressed at the tryout, earned a spot uh, eventually on their 90-man roster. And Pete Carroll was very high on him during, during the preseason. He's going to come to Indianapolis and be a backup nose tackle to David Perry. An undersized guy when you think about normal 3-4 defensive no- or three four nose tackles. So I think that's why he went undrafted um, and wasn't initially signed by any team. Uh, but he had a very strong preseason by all accounts. Uh, I think everyone knows the Seahawks have a pretty deep defensive line. So it wouldn't shock me at all if he came in here and played some sort of role on Sunday in Buffalo. And then Robert Myers is the other name that you guys mentioned. He's an offensive guard, a fifth-round pick um, by the Baltimore Ravens. This past year, it seems like a little bit more of a project. Uh, and again, I don't think there's an immediate need right there for the Colts because Hugh Thornton is back at practice this week. So I think he'll be your backup guard heading into uh, week one in Buffalo. Well, looking at, I was reading through your, your stuff over the weekend at Colts.com, and what caught my eye was obviously the headline to make room for these two guys. They had to obviously cut a few different guys, and, and one of them was Dan Boom Heron, which is a guy that I've always uh, especially last season because of the, the injuries at the running back position and because that position was so – it was what it was with Trent Richardson. You didn't know what you were getting out of him. But Boom Heron stepped in and played, I thought, fairly well. Uh, he was a, uh, an upgrade to Richardson, in my opinion. But they, they cut him to make room. Uh, what's the – was that a bit of a surprise on your part when you first saw that come down the wire? Yeah, definitely, because I think it's one of those things where it didn't seem like the injury was too serious. I know Boom mentioned that – He got hurt in the fourth preseason game for fans that don't know, injured his shoulder, um, returning a kick during the second quarter. And he tweeted, you know, I'm good. Now, of course, his definition of good and what doctors might (laughs) cause as a definition might might mean two different things, but it didn't seem like it was too serious. But then again, when you do these numbers crunching and you get down to 53 and the Colts are banged up at the running back position right now with Vic Ballard, I think it came down to Ballard and Gore and the Colts feel that Ballard showed enough when he was out there for the little bit he was out there during the preseason finale um, to warrant a roster spot. So that's why I think you see Ballard on the 53-man roster. And 
head in week one, it's going to be Josh Robinson and Tyler Varga, two rookies that will likely be your backups because Ballard did not practice on Monday um, with that hamstring injury, so he might not play Sunday in Buffalo. We're talking with Kevin Bowen, Colts.com, featured writers for Ford and O'Brien on ESPN, Evansville 105.3 online, ESPN, Evansville.com. Kevin, you mentioned a couple of rookie backups. Uh, Frank Gore, definitely his rookie season is well back into the rearview mirror. <laughs> but it uh, going in, they're going to rely heavily on the veteran. Is you know, You've seen him day in and day out through camp and practice. Uh, is he ready to carry the load, do you think, at least for a little while? I think he is. Again, from a pure rep standpoint, we just don't know. From a Colt standpoint is what I should say because this is a guy that I think he played, you know, I think it was two carries he got in that week two preseason game against the Bears, and that's it. Now, from a practice standpoint, I mean, he is, and I don't think he had one veteran day off during training camp, whereas, you know, Andre Johnson and, you know, a couple of the other veterans took some days off. Uh, but Frank Gore wants to be out there every day. This is a guy that has handled a workload, a pretty extensive workload, when you look at it in his 10 seasons in San Francisco. So, uh, from a pure number standpoint, again, we haven't just seen the volume during the off season and during the preseason, but you look at his track record, you look at his last two games he played in San Francisco, I want to say it was something like you know, 25 carries and 150 yards each in week 16 and week 17 of last year. So based off all that, I think he is ready to handle some sort of workload, and, and I'm very interested to see what Josh Robinson's role is week one behind Frank Gore. You know, if Robinson is your backup, what is his role? Does he get a series? Does he play on third downs? Does he not play hardly at all? You know, backup running backs can play such a pivotal role week in and week out. So I'm very intrigued to see what the Colts do behind Frank Gore because, like you guys mentioned, and as everyone knows, he does have 10 years of tread on those tires and has played in virtually every NFL game that he's been in the league for in these 10 seasons. Well, I'll tell you, even though he's played very limited snaps in the preseason, just as a as a fan and being a longtime fan and knowing what that running game has looked like over the last couple of seasons, knowing his age and knowing that by NFL standards he's he's might as well be out there with a cane or a walker, uh, <laughs> to see him take a take a handoff from Andrew Luck, and I know it's preseason, you don't want to put too much stock into it, but when he's picking up four or five yards a carry, boy, that's uh, I don't care if it, if he only runs the ball ten times. If that's what we get out of him every time, absolutely, go for it, Frank. You run run like the wind, buddy. Uh, I would <laughs> love to a, see that. There's a funny story off that in that Bears game. He had two carries in that Bears preseason game at Lucas Oil Stadium. Each went for five yards. And after the game, you know, I kind of asked him because Frank's not a guy that shows a ton of emotion, but you know he seemed pretty fired up at the start of that game. And I asked him, you know. Kind of what was the reaction that he got from Colts fans, and was he surprised? Because those in Lucas Oil Stadium were pretty loud when Frank Gore got that ball for a preseason game just being a five-yard run. And he was like, do they always go that crazy for five yards? <laughs> and he kind of looked puzzled and was smiling a little bit, like if they go that crazy for five yards in the preseason, just wait till the regular season. Oh, yeah. It's I, think, I think Colts fans, you know, like you said, I mean, they are very appreciative that finally there could be that bell cow with Andrew Luck, and I mean, the last time, if you look at Frank Gore's numbers from 2014, just from a carries, a yards, a yards per carry standpoint, the last time a Colts running back has achieved any of those marks is nearly a decade. So even if he just gets to that output that he was last year in San Francisco or gets close to it, that's going to be the best stat line a Colts running back has had in nearly a decade. So and I think there's going to be chances there, definitely. Uh, might not be early on because he plays some very good front sevens, but you got to think later on in the season when teams realize what the Colts have from a pass-catching standpoint, that's going to be very favorable for Frank Gore in the running game. Kevin Bowen, Colts.com featured writer, joining us for his weekly segment. It's Ford and O'Brien, ESPN Evansville, 105.3 and online, ESPNEvansville.com. Let's look at Sunday's game. Uh, just a, maybe a quick synopsis of what you expect to see. Obviously, we know Tyrod Taylor is going to get the start at quarterback, uh, quarterback for Buffalo. Uh, they've got LaShawn McCoy up there. I think he's going to look to kind of play with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, uh, no pun intended, uh, because of, of his departure from Philadelphia. Um, Colts defensively, rushing defense obviously is always a question mark sometimes, and I know they've brought in some guys to, to try to solidify that a little bit, but what, what is the game plan from Chuck Pagano going into this game on Sunday against the Bills? Well, like I, well, like I said to you guys, I, I'm just excited to, that the Colts are, I think they're going to get a great test week one and all the hype for this Bills team. You guys mentioned some of the names they brought over in the offseason. Rex Ryan coming to that defense, 
mean, that was already a top five defense in the NFL last year. Now you throw in Rex Ryan and all his aggressive nature. Now the Colts will catch a break. Marcel Darius, who by all accounts is one of the best defensive tackles in football, he is suspended, so he won't play week one. It's still a very formidable Bills front, though. From an offensive standpoint, you mentioned Tyrod Taylor. It's going to be his first start in the NFL. He was a backup for four years in Baltimore. Ironically enough, his last start at quarterback came in the 2011 Orange Bowl against Andrew Luck. You'll see Andrew Luck, obviously, on Sunday afternoon. I I expect the Bills to pound the football. LaShawn McCoy wasn't brought in just to be a decoy. I fully expect them to run it a lot, try to take some pressure off Tyrod Taylor, and, and, you know, test what the Colts have up front. You know, Henry Anderson, David Perry, you know, two rookie defensive linemen are going to be starting. You know, what do the Colts have up there? What do the Colts have from a depth standpoint? And from a Colts perspective, I think it's just get these weapons involved. We haven't really seen this whole offense together during the preseason. What does it look like when you have Frank Gore for multiple series or or two. So I, I, I think it's going to be a great game Sunday. I think it's going to be a great test for the Colts. Um, I definitely think it's the hardest game the Colts will have in the first month of the season. So I'm very excited to see what this team looks like because, again, I could see Buffalo maybe not challenging the Patriots to the AFC's crown, but I could see them as a definite wild card team. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think I think the Bills have a shot if they can ride that defense like we've seen teams do in the past. The Ravens did it. They won a Super Bowl with it back in 2000. We've seen other teams do it as well. Kevin, I could talk and, to you. And, and, Go ahead. And the thing about it is we honestly mentioned about the Bills' defense, and that's very deserved, but they've got a lot of offensive weapons. They added Percy Harvin in the offseason. If he can stay healthy, we saw in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago what he can do. Added LaShawn McCoy, added Charles Clay, the tight end from the Dolphins, and still has Sammy Watkins, who had a great rookie season. So there are some weapons there. If Tyrod Taylor can manage things with that defense, I see the Bills as a 10-win team. Great stuff, as always, Kevin. We look forward to it every Tuesday. You can find Kevin at uh, Colts.com. He's their featured writer. Also, follow him on Twitter at K Bowen Colts. We'll do it again next Tuesday. Enjoy the game on Sunday and enjoy the trip to Buffalo and uh, have some hot wings for us. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll do it, guys. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it.